In a few minutes, everything was ready. It was very quiet now on the top of the beach. There was nobody inside, nobody except earthworm. One half of the earthworm looked like a great juicy thick pink sausage lay innocently in the sun for all the sea dogs to see. The other half of him was dangling down the tunnel. James was crouching close beside the earthworm in the tunnel entrance, just below the surface, waiting for the first sea dog. He had a loop of silk string in his hands, the old green grasshopper, and the ladybird was were further down the tunnel, holding on to the earthworm's tail, ready to pull him quickly in out of danger as soon as James gave the word. And far below in the great stone of the beach, the glowworm was lighting up the room so that the two spinners, the silkworm and Miss Spider, could see what they were doing. The centipede was down there too, exhorting them both frantically to greater efforts. And every now and again, James could hear his voice coming up faintly from the depths, shouting, Spin, silkworm, silkworm. spin, you lazy brute, faster, faster. I will draw you to the shouts. Here comes the first sea dog, whispered James. Keep still now, Orphan. Keep still, the rest of you. Get ready to pull. Please don't let it spite me, back the Orphan. I won't, I won't. Shush. Out of the corner of one eye, James watched the sea dog as it came swooping down towards the earthworm, and then suddenly it was so close that he could see its small black eyes and its curved beak, and the beak was open ready to grab a nice piece of flesh out of the earthworm's back. Pull, shouted Jake. James. The old green grasshopper and the ladybird gave the earthworm's tail an enormous tug. And like magic, the earthworm disappeared into the tunnel. At the same time, up went, up went James's hand, and the sea dog flew right into the hoop of silk that he was holding up. The loop, which had been cleverly made, tightened just the right amount, but not too much, around its neck, and the sea dog was captured. Hooray! shouted the old green grasshopper, peering out of the tunnel. Well done, James. Up flew the cedar with James paying out the silk string as it went. He gave it about fifty yards and then tied the string to the stem of the beach. Next one, he shouted, jumping back into the tunnel. Up you dead again. Earthworm. Bring up some more silk, centipede. Oh, I don't like it like this at all, wailed the earthworm. It's only just miss me. I even felt the wind on my back as it went swishing past. Shush, whispered James. Keep still, here comes another one. So they did it again, and again, and again, and again. The sea dogs kept coming, and James caught them, one after the other, and tethered them to the beach dam. One hundred sea dogs, he shouted, wiping the sweat from his face. Keep going, they cried. Keep going, James. Two hundred sea dogs. Three hundred sea dogs. Four hundred sea dogs. The sharks, as though sensing that they were in danger of losing their prey, were hurling themselves at the beach more furiously than ever, 
and the beach was sinking lower and lower, still in the water. Five hundred seagulls, Jim shouted. Silkworm says she is running out of silk, yelled the centipede from below. She says she can't keep it up much longer. Now then, Miss Spider. Tell them they've got to, James answered. They can't stop now. We are leaving, somebody shouted. No, we're not. I felt it. Put on another seat of green. Quiet, everybody, quiet. Here's one coming now. This was 500 and first seed out, and the moment that James caught it and tethered it to the stem with all the others, the whole enormous beach suddenly started rising up slowly out of the water. Look out, here we go. Hold on, folks. But then it stopped, and there it hung. It hovered and swayed, but it went no higher. The bottom of it was just touching the water. It was like a delicately balanced steel that needed only the tiniest push to tip it one's way on it or the other. One more will do it, shouted the old green grasshopper, looking out of the tunnel. We are almost there. And now came the big moment. Quickly, 502nd Seedow was caught and harnessed to the beach dam. And then suddenly but slowly, majestically, like some fabulous golden balloon, with all the seedows straining at the String above, the giant peach rose up, dripping out of the water, and began climbing towards the heavens.